Hello everyone, Molly Pope here of Molly Pope Art. I have a Protea painting tutorial for you today. If you don't know what a Protea is, it is a gorgeous, um, hardy flower that the shape of it sort of resembles an artichoke to me. So all of the um, petals sort of come up and out of the stem and they sort of close over um, and cup around um, the middle portion, which tends to be sort of uh, white to light pink, fuzzy. Um, they are native to South Africa and Australia, and also known as a sugar bush. Um, and they represent change and hope since the plant regenerates after severe wildflowers. So they come in many different colors and varieties. Um, if you don't want know what these are, I recommend Googling um, the specific um, different varieties of them so you can kind of see what they look like. Um, and this is a queen protea variety. So I have used five colors in total for this protea painting and only two brushes. So this is absolutely doable um, and you can accomplish this painting without a lot of materials invested. And I'm painting on Canson multimedia paper. So you're gonna begin painting uh, your protea drawing with um, painting the outer bracts first. Those are the petals that are the lower portion of the flower closest to the stem. So I have mixed up a color using permanent red, or you can use cadmium medium red if that's what you have, and some titanium white. And um, the protea, uh, the petals are called bracts. So these are the outer bracts um, that I'm working on. And I've added a slight darker portion, that darker red um, in the middle of those bracts. You can see exactly where I placed that color um, placement. And then the next color you're going to mix up is a lighter pink using just basically more titanium white added to the mix. And that gets placed from the tip, um, drawing your brush down towards the bottom of each of those bracts. So it's basically those two colors that um, the permanent red in the middle and then you're washing over those petals pulling down towards the center with that lighter pink on your brush and I also um, want you to kind of think of these petals when you're working the easiest way to sort of uh, when you're working on drawing and or painting um, the easiest way to work is to look for the simplified shapes that will help it be a little bit less intimidating and these are sort of a rounded triangle shape and they um, form in layers again coming out from the stem and radiating up and around to the tip of the flower the top of the flower so if you just think in simplif simplified terms as far as shapes go that could sort of help make it a less intimidating project for you and also you can work on one petal at a time. Um, you see, I usually typically work on a few petals at a time um, and I'll work my way around a painting. And that's how it's like working a puzzle. Um, you just have to think in terms of working in smaller sections to make it a little bit less intimidating for you. Now, the third color that you're gonna throw into the mix on these petals is going to be a burnt sienna. So a burnt sienna is a neutral um, brownish red shade. 
and you'll find that if you look at images of proteas you can see that it's a ruddy sort of red color so it's deeper than the permanent red um, but a lot warmer it tends to be considered a neutral shade so I'm using that color on my brush and just sort of um, working in the shape of those petals so down and curved all towards the stem um, so keep that in mind um, when you're painting your petals you want to paint them in the shape of how they are growing um, I'm not going you know horizontally across those petals again um, just sort of vertically working those that color down but also there's a roundness to my brush strokes if you kind of if you look at the video you can see I'm painting them in the shape of those petals and how they would be growing up and out from the stem. Now, once you've painted those three colors on the outer bracts, um, the outer flower petals, we're gonna begin working um, on those petals that are on the back side of the flower you only see a little tiny bit of those um, so uh, you can see there's just not a lot of detail added to those on the upper um, you know back side of that flower um, but I'm repeating that same process with the same colors so beginning with that permanent red in the shaded areas in the curved areas of those petals um, using that light um, titanium white red mix um, so a light pink color um, on the very tips of those petals where the sunlight would be hitting them and then I will go in and add just the tiniest uh, amount of the burnt sienna in shaded areas and you may want to um, let some of those uh, first bracts first petals that you painted dry down a little bit and then go back in and add a brighter mix of titanium white on the tips. Now, the inner bracts of the protea, they are basically just a little sort of comma shape. Um, that is the easiest way to kind of explain that. And again, those inner bracts, those inner little petals go um, curve up and into the center of the flower. So keep that in mind when you're painting those um, sections of the petals they go up and in towards the center so and that's how you want to paint them and you can see I'm just basically using a soft comma shaped um, or like an elongated oval shape with my brush with that lighter pink mix um, and now I'm going to add a little bit of a hooker's green um, mixed with a lot of white and a small amount of medium olive green and using that color in between all of those inner bracts so you can see there's a little bit um, you don't want that white background to kind of show through in that center um, and you just need to add a very slight little yellow tinge a light color yellow to the the middle of that flower And now I'm using a lighter mix of the burnt sienna and mix it with a little bit of pink. And that goes in the very center of the flower. Um, you can kind of see the placement of that. That just goes in between the inner bracts just to add a little bit more dimension and shadow to the center of the flower and make it look like there's some depth down in there. Now these protea flowers, this, the 
um, middle flowers. I've seen them in um, white. They're beautiful. They're really fuzzy and furry um, in person. So um, you don't have to paint all those little details in there, but just so you know, your edges can be a little bit um, not smooth. They can be a little bit rough, um, just to give the idea that that center of the flower is sort of fuzzy and um, just blending out those colors and softening up that area um, of after the addition of the burnt sienna mix. And now I'm deepening up the pink color on the back side of those petals, um, on the back side of the flower, just kind of refining that area a little bit. Um, the entire time that you are painting, you are not only painting and adding color and basically using your paintbrush to color in your design that you've drawn, you're also visually assessing your work um, the entire time you are painting. So I recommend um, if you're a beginner, just do a little bit of work, stop what you're doing and um, put a little distance between yourself and your work. And that will give you a little bit more perspective and you can kind of see and assess, do your shadows need to be deepened? Does your highlight need to be brought up uh, brighter? Um, the entire time you're working, that's what you should be doing, adding color, um, filling in your design, but also taking a break and looking and seeing what your painting needs. I also recommend to my students to take a picture, take a cell phone photo of a work in process. Um, what that does, that also gives you great perspective and you can kind of assess your artwork, not only by just looking at it on the paper or the canvas, whatever you're painting on, but for some reason that um, taking a picture of your work and looking at it through those camera lens helps to give you such a great perspective and you can kind of see where you need to um, deepen shadows in a certain area, um, adjust your colors. If your colors are not quite correct, um, a highlight, you know, add brighter highlights, whatever it is your painting needs. And I'm going back in and adding a little bit more of a brighter white highlight on those inner bracts of the protea. Again, just to kind of bring up that white color um, on the very tips uh, where the light source would be coming from and, and sort of hitting those areas. And you don't want to completely cover what you've already painted. Otherwise, uh, you lose your sort of detail that you're trying to add to your artwork. So when you're working, each little area needs um, at least a mid-range color, a highlight color, and a shadow color. So keep that in mind. You need at least three colors for each little area, each little detail area that you are painting. Um, and to begin painting the stem, you're going to base coat the stem with a medium olive green and then I have used um, a hooker's green just to kind of add a little bit more detail to um, you know show sort of the stems the stems are also very thick and coarse they do really remind me proteas do really remind me of an artichoke um, so very thick very coarse stem um, and sort of cactus-like um, flower and leaves and stems. Um, so again, base coat your leaves, base coat your stem with that medium olive green. And then you can go back in and begin adding some shadow areas by mixing up hooker's green with um, a little bit of your burnt sienna just to dull it down a little bit and to make it a little bit more of a realistic looking green.
So once you've added the base color of that medium olive green, you can see I'm adding, um, using the same brush, I'm using that mix of the medium, the um, hooker's green mixed with a little bit of the burnt sienna, and I'm adding some detail. So in the areas where those leaves would be in shadow, such as under the flower head, and where this leaf that I'm painting right now is a little bit uh, curved, um, that would be in shadow. And also the center vein um, on the leaves, uh, I'll use that same color to show um, some detail. So what you're doing is you're trying to fill in um, and create a little bit more realistic detail. And that's where you can see, you can see the difference in my brush strokes from the first application of color where I am basically just filling in each area and then now you can see that difference in the brush strokes um, they're shorter that are, are a little bit more deliberate where I'm adding detail so you're going to continue adding that shadow in the areas where the leaves would be in shadow um, and also I'm using a little bit more of a watery wash um, of the hooker's green mixed with the burnt sienna. And you'll still see that yellow um, green through the wash that I'm applying now. You, you can still see that color underneath, that beautiful yellow color of the medium olive green. Now, to get a highlight color on the tops of the leaves and where the sunlight would be hitting them, you're going to mix in some titanium white into that medium olive green. The titanium white um, will, um, it is a more opaque color. So mixing that into the medium olive green, you can kind of see it will cover some of the color, um, the previous applications of color that you applied. So again, I'm just using that same brush and a little bit more deeper color and um, layering in those shadows and deepening them where they need to be deepened. So you can see that where those leaves overlap, I have two leaves that overlap on the right-hand side, two leaves that overlap on the left-hand side. And the overlap area is where you wanna kind of pay particular attention to. The leaf that is underneath needs to have um, a little bit deeper color to show that it's underneath. And then where you are overlapping, where that leaf is on the top, you need to have a highlight color right next to that so you put light against dark to really that dark will help to push the leaf that you want to be underneath it will help to push it into the background a little bit and that highlight color that you apply to the top will also it will bring that leaf that is in the front out 
you know, it'll make it appear like it is overlapping that leaf in the back. So you really need to pay particular attention to those areas. Whether you're painting um, petals or leaves, um, that is how you show dimension. And that is how you show someone looking at your artwork that you have two leaves that are overlapping each other. If you didn't have the shadow and the highlight, it would just appear, your work would just appear flat. Very important to pay attention to those overlap areas. Now for the stem, the stem is very simple. Um, I'm using that same brush and I have laid uh, the medium olive green down first and then I'm just using that same mix that I used on the leaves that hooker's green mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna just to draw basically horizontal uh, or excuse me vertical lines straight up and down on the stem and you can blend that out if they appear too harsh you can blend those out by adding a little bit more of the medium olive green and just kind of softening your lines a little bit and that is we're just about finished with this tutorial um if you have any questions on how to paint any part of this if you want to attempt to do this yourself which i hope you do um you can drop your questions or comments in the comment section and i would be happy to answer them um, the last little bit on this painting is switching to the size zero liner brush. And you can see I'm basically just using my liner brush with a watery application of paint and just again, bringing that paint, making vertical, vertical strokes, pulling down towards the bottom of the stem. And that just adds a lot of visual interest and texture to your stem and then I use that little tiny brush also with a brighter highlight more white added to the medium olive green and you can see that sort of gives you a brighter highlight and then I've gone back in um, and added a little bit more of a peachy color to those inner bracts on the protea top um, I just felt like they were a little bit too washed out a little bit too light um, this is why it's super important, as I was talking about earlier in the video, is it's very important to stop what you're doing um, and take put some distance between you and your work and assess what your work needs. Um, and that's what I did. I just felt like the um, inner bracts on the flower, on the protea flower, were just a little too washed out. So again, I just went in and accomplished that by adding um, a little bit of a red orange color you can use vermilion or um, red orange um, and just add it to white and just get a, like a medium peachy color just to add a little bit more dimension and then also i wanted to go back in and add um, brighter highlights to those inner bracts um, on the tips of them where sunlight would be hitting so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, if you have any questions again, um, as I stated before, drop them in the comment section. Um, and I certainly do appreciate you watching my videos and spending time on my channel. And thank you so much for watching and joining. Have a great rest of your day.